Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. Welcome back. Today, let's talk about sidearms. It's a perfect time to, at the making of this video, the time it's coming out. Today at Reset, we're going to have an exotic sidearm coming. And this review today brings us back to the Nessus Obelisk. It completes the Sundial Weapon Drops for Nessus and the EDZ, so Gallant Charge, Patron of Lost Causes, the Infant Paths 8, down in the description below. There's going to be links to those reviews. And again, as you level up each Obelisk, you can get to a point where four are going to drop after a Sundial run. You can then get bounties for three or four of the weapon that you want to grind for. So you can really farm these out. If there's a roll that catches your attention during the review, go out and get it because you can't. Today's weapon is one of the better sidearm archetypes. An adaptive frame 3 burst, the Traveler's Judgment 5. And I can't begin to tell you how much fun I've been having with it. I've had high 40 kill games, 50 kill games with it. And in this review, there are some really good rolls to pick up and talk about. And again, like I always do, I'm going to present some information, and you can decide if you want to pick one up. And of course, I'm going to chime in with some of the roles I value most. But even if you dislike sidearms, there is one role that's going to future-proof you PvE-wise, and that same role is actually a top-tier PvP role. Aside from that, the sidearm has multiple great roles that can be centered around your playstyle with how you like to play with a sidearm. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, why get this one or use this one when Last Hope is out there with perks like Multi-Kill Clip? Rampage, Rangefinder, Last Dance, you know, all these different sidearms. This one has a couple of special things about it. And there are two perks for Traveler's Judgment that are just flat out elite. And you can do so much with the sidearm. It has so much utility. These as a whole, collectively, these sidearms have been getting better and better. And I'll bring this up during the exotic sidearm review. On 9-12-19, the sidearms got a PvE damage increase to minor and major combatants by 16%. So that's very good on the PvE side. On 12-10, all sidearms got increased target acquisition across the board. This is an extremely good PvP buff on the PvP side. And of course, that carries on into PvE. And in PvE, sidearms are doing pretty well now. And this particular sidearm elevates what you want to do. We'll get into that with perk combinations. Now in the Crucible, remember, you have freedom with the sidearm. You have your vertical space, you have movement, you have the distance and close quarters. A shotgun rush is a linear movement most of the time, and sidearms have that offensive, defensive capability and just overall space to work with. The three burst excels at getting in a lot of damage very quickly, and for the Crucible, they are the most lethal base primary in the game when you're accurate. They kill faster than Last Word, they kill faster than an amped up sweet business, they kill faster than machine guns, and of course one hit kill weapons like shotguns aren't taken into account. But PvP wise, don't sleep on these, you can put in a lot of work. It accepts sights, which are similar to barrels, not scopes. It's locked in on a 1.2 time zoom. It's very open, clean, easy to track with. For its base stats, it has a range of 45, stability of 84, handling of 56, reload of 40, an aim assist stat of 70, and a recoil direction stat of 89. Now the stats on this thing are all top tier. Out of all three burst sidearms, it's tied for the best range and reload. It has the second best handling and stability. It's tied for the best aim assist. There's nothing bad about it. Inherently, these have a ton of stability, decent range for what they are, and very high aim assist. For the sights, there isn't really a bad sight, and that's kind of rare. As I go through them, look and pay attention to what they give. The control has plus 10 to handling, plus 10 to stability, plus 5 to aim assist. The tactic, plus 5 to range, plus 5 to aim assist. Quick dot, plus 15 to handling, plus 5 to aim assist, plus 5 to stability. Short spec, plus 3 to range, handling and stability, plus 5 to aim assist. There's the target SAS, plus 8 to range, negative 5 to handling and stability, but plus 5 to aim assist. The far point, plus 15 to range, negative 10 to handling and stability, and another plus 5 to aim assist. The only one I can't really get behind is the target SAS, because if you're going to be going for range, far point is way better. Notice that they all give plus 5 aim assist, all have really good stats, and even the far point that gives that plus 15 to range, but negative 10 to handling and stability, those are the strengths of this weapon. And for some of those stats, perk combos and perks can help that out a little bit. Now for the magazine, there are eight options. If you get something like Dragonfly or Surrounded, a pure mag option like a pen and mag is great. But otherwise, the top three are going to go to high caliber rounds. That gives plus five to range and flinches your targets. Ricochet rounds, it's plus five to range and plus 10 to stability. And the third is actually going to be armor piercing rounds. Rounds cause extra damage to combatants' shields, and it overpenetrates targets. It gives you 5% more damage versus shields, and then it overpenetrates them. Onto the perks, the first perk node has Rapid Hit. It's an absolutely elite perk. There are only two sidearms in the entire game that have it, this and the Lonesome. And we talked about it in the Scout video. Rapid Hit makes weapons. It really does. There's a reason Rapid Hit with Sacred Providence feels so good. Randy's Throwing Knife and others. Rapid Hit is all about the stability that it gives while also granting that huge boost to reload speed. Precision Hits grant that stability and of course the reload speed, it stacks at times five. 
Fitting Frenzy, another top tier perk. Any kill grants a faster reload, unlike Outlaw that needs you to land a precision final blow. Auto loading holster, it has a place with a sidearm actually, and it depends on how you want to use it. We'll talk about that in a moment with perk combinations. Firmly planted, increased accuracy and stability, and handling when firing while crouched. Now I'm usually all over this perk, but in a sidearm's case, it's gonna be a no, because you aren't really laning with a sidearm, and if you decide to do that, you take away the greatest strength of them, your movement. Hip fire grip, I'm not necessarily opposed to this, because usually this is going to be a second perk node option for most sidearms. And the thing about sidearms is they have great inner accuracy, like right here, great hip fire. There's really no need for a free hand grip, no need for an Icarus, but both of those mods really do help. And if you hip fire a lot, this is actually not a bad option to try to tighten up that spread a little bit more. Otherwise, out of the gate, they have really good, pure, fairly dependable hip fire. Field prep, deeper ammo reserves, and some of you might want that for PvE, you should be fine without it though. You get an outlaw type reload speed when you crouch, and I love this perk, but not for this sidearm. With what you want to do with this sidearm, Rapid Hit and Feeding Frenzy are way better. My top two ranked are Rapid Hit, Feeding Frenzy. My two situational picks are going to be Hit Fire Grip and Auto Loading Holster, and the bottom two are Field Prep and Firmly Planted. The second perk node we have Surrounded, this weapon gains bonus damage when three or more enemies are in close proximity, and this happens a lot in PvE, and it's really a shame that Threat Detector isn't in the other node to pair it with, but that's alright though, Surrounded gives 30% more damage when three or more enemies are near, and it has about a 14 to 15 meter range. In PvE content, this is going to be up all the time, it's free damage, it's a great perk. Next, we have Disruption Break, and here's the deal. Would you believe me if I told you that this is one of the main draws to the weapon? Breaking an enemy's shield with this weapon makes him vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. There are, again, only two sidearms in the game with Disruption Break. This one, and the updated Drang from the Menagerie. We're at a point right now that you can get this Traveler's Judgment with the Sundial, where you have multiple drops at the end, or you can go back to the Menagerie for the Drang. Traveler's is currently in a better farming state, and I will be going over Disruption Break in detail later on in the review. Dragonfly, always top tier, and since sidearms got that little buff, they're packing a little bit more of a punch, it's really appealing because this thing shreds through ads. You can add on a Dragonfly spec and have that explosion be greater, with a little bit more blast radius and do more damage. Next, we have Tap the Trigger. Grants a short period of increased accuracy and stability on the initial trigger pull. It already has super high stability. This kind of levels it out even more from the start. Since this thing shoots so fast, the buff's going to come out with Tap the Trigger. You can take another shot, then the buff's going to come back, so it basically feels continuously stable. Tap the trigger goes out, you shoot two shots, tap the trigger comes back. It's an elite PvP perk. We have Headseeker. This was a part of the original Traveler's Judgment. It isn't necessarily bad, and this would be a PvP perk if you decide to choose it. These do 33 to the head and 20 to the body. Headseeker procs on headshots that occur after a body shot. So here's a scenario on how that would work. Say you didn't have Headseeker and went body, headshot, headshot with your burst. The total damage would be 86. You do that again, a second burst for 86 damage. You're now at 172 total after two bursts. Your third burst is going to come out as a body shot for 20 damage. That's 7 total bullets, you'd be doing 192 damage. That downs a lot of resilience in the game. But if you had Headseeker, that 33 jumps to 35. So in that same scenario, when you go body critical critical, the damage would be 90. You do it again for a second burst, that's 180. That body shot added of 20 would be 200 total damage. And that downs anything in the game. Not bad, it works, but you can be very, very precise with Traveler's Judgment. It has a high base stability. When you add something like Rabbit Hit, all three bullets land fairly frequently when you're in range with Rabbit Hit going. And lastly, we have Shield Disorient. Energy Match Shield Explosions Disorient Nearby Combatants. You have way more useful perks than this, and I do wish that they would make it to where it's breaking any shield, not just matched, but that might be a little bit too much. I value this really low on the list. So let's start pairing these perks for PvE. Real quick, I myself am going through these Sundial weapons. As I grind them, I test them, I review them. The things I recommend are the same exact things I'm keeping and I'm using. From the Demolitionist Multi-Kill Clip Gallant Charge, to the Rapid Hit Explosive Payload Patron of Lost Causes, and of course the other roles, like the Patron with Rapid Hit and Vorpal as becoming my main PvE weapon. But I'm now on to this sidearm, and I do encourage you to get one of these with Disruption Break. Again, only two sidearms have it, and here's the reasoning. Number one, Disruption Break is still what it is. A whole bunch of debuffs and damage dealing perks got nerfed. Tractor Cannon used to do 33 or 50% for a debuff. It was nerfed to 30%. The Hammer Strike allows you to do 50% more damage, nerfed to 30%. Shattering Strike from Spatula Blades, nerfed to 30%. Disruption Break is still 50% more damage. It's not tied to an element, it's any shield that you hit. So yellow bars that have shields, you can break them with this sidearm, bring out a high impact sniper or a kinetic vorpal weapon or whatever it is, 
all the way up to Izanagi and make those do 50% more damage. Now, there are only 13 total legendaries in the game with this perk. There are rockets, there are SMGs, there's a hand cannon, but only two sidearms. And back then with the Menagerie, we'll bring up Drang. The game was in a different state, the nerfs weren't really there, we didn't have anti-barrier for the champions. Disruption Break didn't have too much attention. And the second thing, that leads to future-proofing yourself, because sooner or later you would think that sidearms are going to be a main point to the artifact, and if they are, when they are, you can say, you know what, I have that Travelers with Disruption Break, because unless they change it, or changed it, anti-barrier champions that get their barrier popped by a Disruption Break weapon, that 50% debuff piles on, and most of the time an Izanagi shot will just one-shot the champion. And all this really depends on if you find value in it. Being a sidearm, with the little increase it got in damage for PvE, it's doing quite well. And even right now, doing things like Sundial or Nightfall, any shield I see, it's getting hit by this sidearm, then I switch to my Kinetic. I use that Vorpal Weapon Scout, I've used a Sniper, or I can break the shield, then my team can start hammering down with Kinetic Weapons, and it still grants everybody that 50% more damage. That debuff is still huge right now because it's doing 50% as a debuff. So for the setup, if you want, armor piercing rounds are actually ideal for this in PvE. It's only 5% more damage, but the whole goal with Disruption Break is to break the shields. That's going to be helping out with doing that, because that's really all that you're going to be doing. If not, high cals are great, ricochet, or a mag option. It's going to be fine versus plain and basic trash mobs. You're using this for those majors. Now the perk to pair it with can actually go one of three ways. It can work with any of these roles. It depends on how you want to fine tune it, how you want to use it. Mine is personally rapid hit. That way I get stability, that way I get reload. And this doubles as my main PvP travelers, and we'll talk about that later. But you could also go feeding frenzy disruption break, or even auto loading disruption break, because think about it. And I did grind these out, and this one really works well. You can bring out the sidearm, break the shields, holster it, spam it down with the kinetic, and when you pull it out again, it's going to be reloaded for you to break the shields and do this all over again. And of course, at any time when enemies are rushing you, the sidearm's going to rip through them. All of these work, it just depends on how you want to use it. Next combos with Dragonfly, again, those three perks that we talked about are all kind of interchangeable depending on your playstyle. If you main it, obviously Rapid Hit or Feeding Frenzy. But say if you're maining your Kinetic Weapon, then when ads start rushing you, you can bring out the sidearm, spam them down, get Collaterals with Dragonfly, then stow it, that's where Auto Loading Holster comes into play. And lastly, Surrounded paired with, again, any of those three, and we've talked about just the different playstyles. And you're always going to be doing 30% more damage because there's always going to be enemies near you. The Dragonfly Surrounded rolls up to you, they do quite well, but the Disruption Break one has a lot of utility. And that's personally the main one I would go for, and that was the main one I got. On the Crucible, for me, it revolves around Rapid Hit. Rapid Hit makes the world go round, and again, it's only on this and the Lonesome. With this one, you put three bullets down on your enemy quickly. The Rapid Hit Reload's gonna be good, even if you just land one bullet. If you land two, it's fast for what it is. The stability is key though. The stability combats flinch, helps you stay on your target. It's a great feeling on this, and with its TTK, you need to land headshots. Secondary after that, it's going to be Feeding Frenzy. Getting a fast reload is good after a kill, but Rapid Hit does it so much better in the Crucible. And lastly, you can go Hit Fire, and that can work on any subclass if you're using your vertical space. Your first top combo for the Crucible is Rapid Hit, tap the trigger. As you've seen, this sidearm doesn't have any damage dealing perks, aside from the secondary damage from Dragonfly, but that's okay. These achieve a 0.5 TTK if you land 6 straight headshots, so 2 bursts. So what better way to obtain that than with a stability stat that's near 90, that's just at base, a perk that gets you more stable as you land headshots, and then a perk that starts off the burst accurately on your first initial trigger pull to get better stability. This is a great dueling sidearm, it already has little to no recoil, and I haven't talked about it to this point, but it doesn't really matter if you're on mouse and keyboard versus controller. And this is a very rare case when it comes to a weapon. It isn't severely drastic from platform to platform, but with M and K, you can hit longer shots with more precision. But within effective range, this sidearm is stellar wherever you are. And I would go for this combo over Feeding Frenzy Tap the Trigger, because Rapid Hit makes it all work. The second combo for the Crucible is Rapid Hit Disruption Break, and hear me out. I actually find myself using this one way more than Rapid Hit Tap the Trigger. This is mostly because, again, Rapid Hit is such a solid perk, it puts in so much work that I'm okay with that and not having tapped the trigger. But the deal with Disruption Break is that it works in the Crucible as well. Once you get your enemy to half health, they are debuffed, and you might be wondering why that's important. When you break their shields, they're debuffed for 5 seconds. There's actually a counter on their screen that's at 4, goes down to 0 and double zero counts. With the sidearm, many, many times, you have that range, you have that movement, you have that vertical space, so when people rush you, you can break their shields at a distance, and at that point, they back off, especially if you lay in quick, heavy damage. At that point, they're debuffed, so weapons like Thorn do 101, Duke 130-ish. 
An aggressive pulse does 40 per bullet, so if they were able to actually take the damage, it'd be 160 damage to the critical. And that's just the critical. You can also body shot as well for more damage as long as it's your kinetic weapon. So it comes up all the time. I'm getting rushed or I'm the one rushing. I control the engagement. If I need to, after I break the shield, say they disengage or I disengage and we're in this little standoff, if they decide to peek me, I melt them with the kinetic. And say I have the sidearm out and I'm kind of going around, I'm in an engagement and I see someone behind them that's you know 20, 30 meters away, like hand cannon range. And I see that they're low health or low shield, I should say. I try to tap their shield getting 10, 15 damage. That way I can break it. Then I'd pull out my kinetic. There's an opportunity to kind of chip at shields with it, if that makes sense. So that's really good. But not only that, one of the best things is it's really ideal versus a super. You can, again, use your vertical space, your movement, watch until you break half health then you bring out the kinetic. If you do break those shields, any of your team can hit them as well and they go down quickly and you just melt them. A Vorpal weapon pairing with this disruption break sidearm is really good, it's fantastic. So it does have a lot of PvP utility with disruption break. I've been having an absolute blast. Overall, for PvE, we talked about its place in the perk combo section. It depends on how you want to run it. Each one does something a tad bit different. There's the Dragonfly roll, Surrounded, and of course, Disruption Break. For PvP overall, these do 33 to the head and 20 to the body, a .5 TTK if you land two straight bursts. That's six headshots, one of the fastest primaries in the game, if not the fastest. It's an instant delete. Its base range stat is 45, and its effective range right there is 15 meters and in. At 15 meters, it does 33 to the head. At 16, it starts going down to 32. If you get the range stat to 65, which is one of the higher ranges, that adds 20 to the stat. And this one has far point, high caliber rounds, and a range masterwork. It's hitting its max damage at 16 meters, so adding range isn't really doing that much. Of course, though, it does help with the stickiness at further distances just a tad. Your real work is going to be put in within 15 meters and in, but remember these did get better target acquisition, so at a distance, you can still land shots, and that's why the disruption break roll works even better. Breaking the shields at a distance, then melting them with the kinetic weapon. I know this one doesn't have kill clip. There are burst sidearms, last dance, last hope. They have tap the trigger, they have range finder, various damage dealing perks, but this one, it has rapid hit. And to achieve that 0.5 TTK, you need to land criticals, and rapid hit makes that easier. Again, you get out on tap the trigger to make that better, or in my case, my personal favorite, Disruption Break. In conclusion, Traveler's Judgment definitely has a place. It has one now currently in the sandbox, but if not, if you shelve it, it is a tool in your toolbox. If the artifact ever accepts sidearms, this is one that you want for it, especially for anti-barrier if that still works. That way you can pop the shields, they will be debuffed, and you can just Izanagi them down. For the Crucible, it's a dueling sidearm, and it does win duels. For it to do that though, you need to control your engagement, make them play your game, don't play theirs, and Rapid Hit really helps achieve that .5 TTK. Enough so that again, I foregone tap the trigger for Disruption Break. With that being said, tap the trigger and Rapid Hit combined is elite. If you haven't used a sidearm in a while, give this one a shot. We still have a lot of time left this season, so if there's a role that you want, go out and get it. I personally do believe that this one is worth your time. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. What do you think about Traveler's Judgment 5? What roles do you have? What do you find value in? Let's talk about it down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I'm Cool Guy.